Hi, I'm Marta Martinez, Chair of the Cost Action IC1102 VISTA, and I'm here today to present some of the challenges in the design of antenna front ends for mobile future mobile communication systems. That would be the evolution towards the 5G in mobile communication. For that, we should take a look at what happened up to now in the world of mobile communications. It all started about 40 years ago with the first generation. The first generation was only oriented to voice and it was analog. But there, it was linked also to the coexistence of many different uh, systems around the world and there was no compatibility. So if you were within one network, you couldn't move to the other one. That was uh, the, what set the start for the second generation. Second generation was uh, based on an open standard, uh, GSM, uh, in which everybody could implement a new, uh, its own system, but the signal in the air had to be compatible. This allowed to transmit voice on one side and some small amount of data. And uh, we had some uh, compatibility between the different systems. So you could move from one network to the next or even move between different countries. Uh, of course, the interest in transmitting more data was uh, very important, uh, but it was not possible with GSM. Uh, before the third generation was implemented, there was a, a small step in between called 2.5G. It was more data-oriented and it's called the GSM Phase 2 Plus. It was based on packet, uh, packet switching and allowed to transmit a higher data rate than we, uh, what we had in the second generation, but still not as much as in the third generation. The advent of the 3G was linked to the possibility of performing uh, multimedia uh, transmission uh, in, within uh, these mobile networks. It was called in Europe, for example, UMTS, and uh, it was uh, what allowed us to transmit a much higher data rates. Nowadays, we have uh, the development and also the implementation of the fourth generation, which allows us to uh, access the broadband internet on a wireless fashion, and it's uh, called here LTE. But everybody's talking now about the deployment of the fifth generation, 5G. What is exactly this 5G that everybody's talking about? Well, 5G is something different. It's not an evolution, but a framework that will integrate all that we have already now in the different networks, cellular networks, wireless networks, etc., and also new applications. It wants to provide a current infrastructure platform that integrates all these services. But we will have to change the way we think. We will not think about data rates anymore, but we will, uh, as a quality of measure, uh, measure of quality, we will have other ways of determining it. It will be uh, user-driven, we will talk about quality of service and uh, user experience. And we also will have a, a development of 5G will be user-driven. That means that applications will pop up and will have to be integrated within this current uh, framework. That's why some people have uh, defined uh, what we call now the 5G hyperservice cube. And as you can see in this diagram, we will have many different applications that are included in 5G. We will have uh, nomadic applications, mobile applications and fixed applications. Uh, that's why the mobility will go from, for example, between five, uh, 0 and 500 kilometers per hour, and also we will be covering a wide spectrum of frequencies between 300 megahertz up to the terahertz region. This is a, a large challenge for all the deployment of this uh, 5G infrastructure. It's also a very important challenge for antenna designers. What are these challenges? On the, f the first uh, thing that we can see is that we have a massive growth in the traffic volume that will be circulating in the networks. We are thinking about 1,000 times the volume you have nowadays and even more. We also will have a massive growth of the devices that are connected to these networks. We were talking about, about uh, 5 billion devices in 2010 and there will be over 50 billion by when we reach 2050. And this is a conservative estimation. We also will have a wide range of requirements and characteristics regarding, for example, data rates. We will have very low data rate applications, for example, for, from sensing networks. But we also will have uh, very high data rates coming from uh, high definition uh, television, for example, multimedia, etc. We will also have to have uh, a high reliability of the uh, service and very high quality of service. 
Also, we have the problem of energy consumption. Nowadays, the networks are consuming a very, very important part of the energy that is produced in the world. We want to reduce it due to the cost uh, aspects, but also because we want to go th uh, to affordable, sustainable and green communications. So, as a summary, we can say that uh, for 5G, we have different challenges that we have to address. First, we have to go towards an efficient use of the radio spectrum by increasing the bands that we are using, as I said before, from the uh, megahertz range up to the terahertz and extend what we know now to the millimeter wave bands. We also have to go to solutions that are away from this one fit, uh, fit all. Nowadays, we have mobile phones that everybody are using and everybody are using the same frequencies. In the future, depending on the, on the application, we will have different terminals and we will have also different frequency rates that are available. We have to think also about the costs and the sustainability of the developments we are doing and move towards green communications. And we will have to face the challenge of going from a worldwide standardization like we have in, 5, in 4G towards user-driven applications that pop up and have to be included under this 5G umbrella without any kind of standardization. So we have to include all the devices in this 5G ecosystem. We will have wearable and flexible communications, we have to access the mobile cloud, we have to have communications within the industrial... Uh, um, in, within industry, for example, machine-to-machine -machine communication, industry of the future, uh, internet of things, etc. We will go towards intelligent transport, more security and safety in our world, and also uh, healthcare and assisted living. For all that, we will need cost-efficient, uh, reconfigurable and uh, agile antennas that are also multifunctional and can be adapted in different kinds of devices. Research is going on around the world. As an example, I can show you this uh, slide that I have uh, borrowed from uh, Entity Docomo and shows how a single operator in Japan is working nowadays with many different providers and many different topics just to try to guess what has to be deployed in the future to cover all the bands from the low frequency megahertz bands up to above uh, 30 gigahertz. And with this overview, I hope you have a better idea of the main challenges that we are facing moving towards 5G. Thank you for your attention.